everybody, I wanted to share with you a new project I've started. I'm calling this AeroMax, like aerodynamics, maximum efficiency. Um, basically, the idea was to streamline the body as slim as possible, very aerodynamic. And normally, our bodies have a uh, wedge on the front that creates the downforce we need. And so this time, my downforce is going to be created by the arms. And um, so then it's a little bit more direct to push on the, the wheel rather than the body pushing on a bumper that attaches to the diff housing that attaches to the arms or suspension and then to the arms and then to the wheel so a little bit more direct um, I don't think the bottom arm is going to have as much effect so the the top one has pretty extreme angle and I really kind of over exaggerated it it may be excessive um, but I figured I'd, I'd rather err on the side of caution and add a little extra downforce on the front um, as always, I'd love to encourage people to build something like this. So the idea, you know, as I mentioned, is to streamline it. There's no little people in there. We don't need that part. Um, so if I move this over, you can see here next to a uh, Delta Plastics body, just how compact this is gonna be. Um, and I built it specifically so that inside, and this is a uh, Mojave chassis, I have a uh, TP, TP stands for toilet paper, pretty sure. Uh, TP 4070 there, There's tons of room for an XLX2, lipos, lots of room on the Mojave chassis. Um, so anyway, you might be curious how I made this, um, and I left the the front nose sort of in there. <clears throat> um, basically, I took, uh, let me pull that back off, took this stuff and I, this is what was in the car when I um, started making it. And I wrapped this up in like a uh, glad cling wrap so that I wouldn't get anything on it. And the first thing I did was I took expanding foam and I like the Loctite expanding foam and just kind of covered the whole thing. And of course, you know, this takes multiple steps. So you let it harden. I took a knife, cut the foam right along the chassis and then kind of shaped out the front like you had seen. Um, and actually this is the center section. It still has that cling wrap in here. This cavity right here is where the motor was. Um, I think up here is where the servo was sitting. So this literally was here in the middle section. I can't fit it on now because the arm actually gets in the way. Um, but it, it was on here. Uh, foam, as I said, the expanding foam and that Loctite stuff is real dense. It cuts nice. You can sand it with like a sanding block and shape it. And then I took a uh, joint compound or like the sheetrock mud and kind of slicked over everything to make it real smooth. You can see here it wasn't perfect and it doesn't have to be um, for what I was doing. And then the green is PVA. I brushed it on. It's like basically liquid plastic. Helps it uh, separate. It helps the fiberglass not stick. And I even put some wax on there too. And uh, this fiberglass piece just literally popped right off and you can see there how it fits in the center section it's popped right off um, so you know, on top of this I put fiberglass just with a they call them chip brushes and just patted it down with a polyester resin um, which left me with this I still need to do some body filler and some sanding on it but um, basically I got this streamlined shape so um, I did the same thing with the arms. And I, I have one of the ones for the other side here. Put foam on it, then shaped the foam, and then I draped that 
in fiberglass. And I made kind of a jig, just a screw and a piece of wood that held it like this so I could drape the fiberglass over it. So you let it sit a day and then I just put body filler on the top and I still need to sand this one. And the end result, once you sand it with a sanding block, you got high spots and low spots. Um, get that thing leveled out and straightened up and um, anyway, you could end up with something like that. I actually have uh, these are Mojave arms on the front because I wanted a little bit more surface area. I wanted more wing between the body and the tire. Um, and this is still a um, Typhon or Sinton 6S CVD axle, so it doesn't quite reach, reach the uh, differential there. So I've got to get the right axles on here. Um, as you can tell, work in progress. Still got to do body filler on there, but I thought you guys would like to see it. I wanted to introduce the project and uh, I mean, look at the, the size difference here of these cars. So something new, something I don't think we've really seen. It's kind of like a Typhoon or like a Limitless, but it's a lot more narrow and definitely more streamlined. Um, and I haven't seen anybody try to apply aerodynamics through the arms, kind of like we see in the Formula One. Uh, I'm going to do something on the rear as well. Uh, and I actually have some other big surprises for this project, some things that will uh, blow your mind. So we'll, we'll see what happens and uh, definitely stay tuned for more on this. Um, I think start to where I'm at now. This took me about two weeks and that's just, you know, coming out here on lunch breaks or little times here and there. A lot of it is putting on foam, letting it dry, putting on the uh, sheetrock mud, letting it dry, doing some sanding, reapply some mud, get the shape balanced and right. Um, there is, I don't even know what these are called. This is a tool made by general angle angleizer angle analyzer so you can basically check a shape on something and then make sure that you duplicate that exact same shape over on the other side or you know do the left side flip it over make sure that the right side matches um, so that's a nice tool if you have concerns about doing something by hand you can also 3d print something like this and then coat that in fiberglass if you haven't seen it before dig it up it's over here um is it over here oh no it's up here this is part of a um outrigger boat project that i need to work on this summer And so this entire thing is 3D printed. Um, 3D printed pieces. You can see here the inside's 3D printed. And on the outside, I've coated it in fiberglass and then did some body work. Um, so this is gonna be a high-speed RC boat and it's all designed in CAD, 3D printed, and uh, then skinned in fiberglass to give it some legit strength. It's, it's hard as a rock, you could stand on it. Um, so anyway, that's another method you could do if you really want everything to be completely accurate. Um, then you can you can go the 3D print route. This, what I did was really cheap, really easy, really fast. Um, and I think anybody could do it. So, um, you know, as usual, I'm encouraging people to make something and do something different that you haven't seen yet. Um, or you know do do what i did and do it better i'm not i'm not a genius or a, a brilliant scientist um just a regular dude with some knowledge on how to make some things so uh definitely if you you see something that i could do better let me know and um got a couple surprises coming with this car for the suspension and few other things that I'll hold for later, but uh, 
anyway, I wanted to introduce the project and hopefully I've inspired somebody. Maybe I blew a few minds and uh, hope to see what you can do and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.